This is the Houses of Parliament in London. Here, the members of Parliament, elected by the people of Britain, pass new laws and change old ones. Once a year, His Majesty the King goes in royal state to open Parliament. The Queen goes with him. They go in procession from their palace, accompanied by the King's guards, which is a very old custom in England. After the opening of Parliament, the members discuss the affairs of the nation. But Parliament cannot deal with local details all over the country, and so every town has its own small Parliament, which is called a council. And so we leave London, the capital, and go to a smaller town somewhere in England to see local government at work. We arrive at a town, not a very big town, which with the districts round it is called a borough. This town is managed or governed by a borough council, the members of which are called councillors, and they are chosen by the people living in the borough. Councillors must be British citizens, no matter what their colour or creed. This man may wish to become a councillor and help to govern the district in which he lives, or this lawyer. Perhaps this carpenter would like to be a councillor, or this sign writer, if he can spare the time, this businessman, or even his wife. Men and women, rich or poor, whether they work in town or in the country, have the right to seek to be allowed to serve on their council. Mr. John Blunt, a farmer, wants to be elected for his district, which is called his ward of the borough, though he knows that being a councillor will take much of his spare time. He should first make sure that he will have the support of his friends before he goes to the town hall for a candidate's nomination form. The town hall is the centre of local government and contains the offices for all government business to do with the district. Mr. Blunt asks to see the town clerk about his nomination or proposal form as a candidate for the coming election. These have all been checked, of course. They have, sir, yes. Thank you, Howard. We can attend to it first thing in the morning. Very good. The town clerk is a paid official, and it's his duty to see that the council's laws are carried out and orders properly obeyed. Come in. Mr. Blunt, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Blunt. Well, won't you sit down? Thank you. Oh, what can I do for you? Well, I want to put up for election to the council. Hmm. I take it you're on the elector's register. Yes. Let me see. Yours is the uh, the North Ward, isn't it? That's right. What is the initial, Mr. Blunt? John. Yes. Here we are. Now that's quite in order. I'll get you a nomination form. Thank you. Here it is. Now all you have to do is to get this signed by two ratepayers, a proposer and a seconder, and let me have it back, not later than next Wednesday. I certainly will. And if there's anything you want to know, please remember I'm here to do all I can for everybody in the borough. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Blunt. Good day, sir. Mr. Blunt goes to call on a friend, a shopkeeper, so that Mr. Blunt can show the town clerk that he has friends who are willing to vote for him. Hello, John. How are you, Fred? Well, what brings you to town? Why, this. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> Nomination form for a councillor, eh? Well, why not? But it's grand. Will you propose me? I'll be only too pleased. Now, uh, where's my pen? Mrs. MacDonald has lived in the borough for a long time, and she's very anxious to have good and honest people in the local government. Oh, excuse me for a moment, madam. I'm just proposing my friend Mr. Blunt for a councillor. Mr. Blunt? Oh, splendid. I've heard a lot about you. And the more people like you who interest themselves in local government, the better. Perhaps, madam, you'd like to second Mr. Blunt. I'll do so with pleasure. Well, that's very nice of you, madam. I'm only too happy. We want our council kept up to the mark. That's why I propose my friend Mr. Blunt. Thank you, madam. And thank you, Fred. Good luck. Good day. Well, madam, what can I get for you today? Well, Mr. Blunt goes back to the town hall to show the town clerk that he has friends living in the borough who will support his nomination. Well, Mr. Blunt, that's quite in order. Good. Both the proposer and the seconder are on the electoral register, and now all you have to do is to get the people to elect you with their votes. Well, I'm certain of one vote anyway. Well, only one. My wife's, of course. <laughs> 
Put these round here, will you? Hello, Daddy. Hello, son. Hello, John. You're soon back. Uh -huh. That didn't take me long, my dear. Was there a lot of fuss at the town hall? Not in the least. The town clerk was most helpful. I just filled up a nomination form and had it signed by a proposer and a seconder. Good. What's the nomination form, Daddy? Well, it tells people who you are and where you live, if you want to be a counsellor. What's a counsellor? Any man or woman who helps to see that you have good schools and teachers, and clean streets, and pure water to drink. And parks to play in, and swimming pools. Yes, and lots of other things to make you grow up healthy and wise. Are counsellors paid wages? Nothing at all, son. They work without payment for the good of all. It's an honour to be elected. I'm going to be a counsellor when I grow up, Daddy. Good boy. Well, what's for tea? A little later, Mr. Blunt invites his friends to his first meeting to explain to them what he proposes should be done for their benefit and tells them why he thinks they should vote for him at the coming election. I'm not asking you to vote for me because our town is run badly. It isn't. But because I wish to make it even better. There are ways of getting better results from the land. New ideas for social services. Things that touch all of us and our dependents. What about the money we pay on our rates and taxes? Would you say we're getting fair value for our money? If you vote for me, I'll see that you get value for money. You say we must get better results. New ideas for social services and all that. Will it cost us more? You can't have new schools, modern hospitals, libraries and other things without helping to pay for them. But I'll see that the money is spent only on those things which are for the benefit of everyone. Mr. Sharp is another candidate who also hopes to persuade his friends to elect him to be a councillor by getting more people to vote for him than for Mr. Blunt. And ladies and gentlemen, all I said was they cost too much. I tell you that you're paying too much for what you get. <laughs> if you vote for me, I'll see that your money's not wasted. Very soon, election day comes round. Those who are old enough to vote have their names written in a book called the Electoral Register. Before the voters receive their ballot papers, that is their voting papers, clerks carefully check their names in the Electoral Register. Address, please. 30 Grange Road. 30 Grange Road. Name, please. Of course, no one must be given a ballot paper if he or she has not the right to vote. The names and addresses are checked for another reason. Nobody must have more than one vote. Each vote must be made in private, so the voters are by themselves when they make their choice for either Mr. Blunt or Mr. Sharp by marking a cross by the side of the name of the candidate they favour. They then place the ballot papers in specially closed, or as we say sealed, ballot boxes, so that no one can interfere with the papers once they've been put in the box. There are several other polling stations in different parts of the ward of the borough so that voters have not far to travel to record their vote. At the end of the day, the polling stations are closed. The town clerk opens the ballot boxes and the counting begins. No mistakes must be made. Not a single vote must be missed. The officials in charge are sitting at the table. Those people behind them are counting agents, the wives and friends of the candidates. They're there to check the counting and to see that no mistakes are made. The two candidates are there for the counting. Think what they must be feeling as the hundreds of votes are sorted and counted. Other people interested in the election and members of the public are also allowed to be present to see that the counting is carried out properly. To make it easier to check the final number of votes, each official counts a limited number of ballot papers and binds them into small packets which are then passed to the chief officers whose duty it is to record the total number of votes by counting the bundles. It looks very much as if Mr. Blunt is going to get more votes than Mr. Sharp. Now this man's late, so he's lost his chance of voting, but he's only got himself to blame. And now everybody's waiting for the final result. The returning officer checks the totals. I call for silence for the returning officer. Ladies and gentlemen, the number of votes recorded for each candidate is as follows. For John Blunt, 1,290. For Edward Sharp, 
642. And I declare that the said John Blunt is duly elected a councillor for the borough. Congratulations, Blunt. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. I appreciate that. Congratulations. Thank you. So Mr. Blunt becomes a councillor, elected by a majority of votes. Councillors meet at the town hall in one large room called the council chamber. The mayor, who is the head of the council, puts on his official robes in his private room called the mayor's parlour. The chain round the mayor's neck is an outward sign to denote his authority. Such chains as this have been in use from ancient times. The mace, like the one on the table, was used as a battle weapon by priests in the Middle Ages. You see, they had no swords because they were not allowed to spill blood. In later years, the mace came to be used in city ceremonies and is taken into the council chamber when the councillors meet together. So today, the mayor's mace is only used when the mayor is on formal duty and it's carried in front of him by a mace bearer as a sign or symbol of his office. Ladies and gentlemen, His Worship the Mayor. It gives me great pleasure to welcome our new councillor, Councillor John Blunt. Before Mr. Blunt can take his seat in the council chamber, he must first sign a form that he will be truthful, honest and loyal if he takes his place with the other councillors. Of course, he does so. Congratulations. Thank you. And now it's time for the council to start the business of local government. Mr. Blunt becomes a member of one of the smaller committees formed from other members of the council to discuss the details in various branches of the council's business. The Public Health Committee, for instance, must see that the borough has proper medical and hospital services for its people. But the chairman must report to the full council what the committee recommends. I will now ask our medical officer to read his report. Mr. Chairman. The new hospital for dealing with maternity cases that was opened in April this year has shown excellent progress. In the hospitals there are special rooms where sick children who in bright surroundings and with the proper medical treatment are soon well again. So you see, their parents have very little cause for worry if their child is ill at any time. Mothers can bring their children to the hospital where doctors advise them on how to treat their children so as to bring them up to be strong and healthy. The Public Health Committee looks after the health of everyone in the borough, and especially the very young. Nurseries for infants where they are taught to be clean and friendly and are helped to use their talents in various ways suitable to their age. The Education Committee, of course, looks after the education of the young people, and all parents must send their children to school when they are old enough. Well, are we all here? Yes, yes. yes. Well, I now ask the Director of Education to read his report on our schools. Well, Mr. Chairman, considerable progress has been made since the last session, and there are one or two points that I'd like to call your attention to in particular. A little way from the busy town, modern schools are built. Round them are large playgrounds where the school children play. The classrooms where they work are large and have plenty of fresh air. And these good conditions help them to become healthier even while they're at their work. The children also learn to work with their hands, which they enjoy as much as learning from books. Another committee of the council controls the police, who not only protect life and property, but also regulate the traffic so that people can walk across the roads in safety. The policemen take special care of the children on their way to school. The parks in the borough, such as this one, with its fields of grass, its flower beds and shady trees, are looked after by the Parks and Open Spaces Committee. In such beautiful and peaceful surroundings, young and old can enjoy their free hours.
Here, young people can play in safety, far from the dangers of the streets. The little children enjoy the swings and roundabouts. While the older people can play games with their friends. Those men and women who are more active may play tennis or swim in the open air pool. Such exercise gives fresh strength and energy to body and mind. The council controls the public libraries where books can be borrowed and taken home. Or you can sit in the reading rooms where there are also newspapers and picture books. As far as possible, all workers should enjoy comfortable homes. This is the business of the housing committee. The supply of water is very important, which also rests with the council. Water is held in lakes called reservoirs and is made clean and pure by passing through filtering beds. From these, it flows to the pumping station, which pumps the pure water through miles of iron pipes hidden under the ground along the streets. Mummy, may I have a glass of water, please? Yes, darling. When Mrs. Blunt needs water, she knows that she'll get good, clean water from her tap. There you are. Thank you. It's very important also to have a great number of water taps or points in the streets. If a fire should break out suddenly, you can see how important water is. And also a well-trained fire brigade to put the fire out. This again is controlled by the council. Electricity, which supplies the bright light in the houses and the street lights at night, is also controlled by the council. So too is the supply of gas for cooking and for keeping the home warm when the nights are cold. Not only does the electricity department provide light and heat, but also the power which drives buses and trams that are owned by the borough council. Sometimes all traffic in the streets must stop for the council's ambulance, taking some sick or badly hurt person to hospital. The council too sees that waste scraps and refuse of every kind is collected from houses and taken away. This is a block of flats. People who live on any floor in this block can put their refuse down the refuse chute into bins below. Council workers collect the refuse and take it away in closed bins on wheels so that the dust and dirt will not blow about and spread disease. Other waste matter is washed out of the houses and along large pipes or drains and then destroyed by chemicals. The streets are kept clean and tidy. They are washed by the council's water carts. When the roads begin to wear, the council has them made up again like new, as quickly as possible. These are only some of the services the councillors look after, which every citizen can use and enjoy. Rightly enough, the citizens must all help to pay for these in rates and taxes. The amount they pay depends on the scale on which they live, whether in a big house or a small one. According to the size of the house, so the householder must pay more or less. Stephen James. Stephen James. Victor Robinson. Victor Robinson. Mr. Richard Warringham, Elms House. Rated on a rental value of 400 pounds. Mr. Warringham is a fairly rich man with money in the bank. He'll pay his rates and taxes by writing out the amount on a cheque, which he sends to the town hall. The rate collector then takes the cheque to the bank and will receive the amount written on the cheque from some of the money Mr. Warringham has in the bank. Mr. Walter East, 29 Churchill Road. Rented on a rental value of 32 pounds. Now, Mr. East is not so rich. He'll go to the town hall himself and count out his money to pay for the rates in cash. That is, with paper money and some coins. At the town hall, Mr. Blunt makes a speech to the council. And I propose that the council take immediate steps to give effect to the committee's recommendation that more homes are provided for the old people and for those who can no longer work. Will those in favor please signify? Uh, obviously carried. After council meetings, Mr. Blunt always goes back to his farm, on which he works until he's asked to attend the next meeting. He's happy to be able to serve his fellow citizens, for service is the one aim and purpose of local government. <laughs> Colour or creed. 
This man may wish to become a councillor and help to govern the district in which he lives. Or this lawyer. Perhaps this carpenter would like to be a councillor. Or this sign writer, if he can spare the time. This businessman, or even his wife. Men and women, rich or poor, whether they work in town or in the country, have the right to seek to be allowed to serve on their council. Mr. John Blunt, a farmer, wants to be elected for his district, which is called his ward of the borough, though he knows that being a councillor will take much of his spare time. He should first make sure that he will have the support of his friends before he goes to the town hall for a candidate's nomination form. The town hall is the centre of local government and contains the offices for all government business to do with the district. Mr. Blunt asks to see the town clerk about his nomination or proposal form as a candidate for the coming election. So we leave London, the capital, and go to a smaller town somewhere in England to see local government at work. We arrive at a town, not a very big town, which with the districts round it is called a borough. This town is managed or governed by a borough council, the members of which are called councillors and they are chosen by the people living in the borough. <coughs> Councillors must be British citizens, no matter what they are get to open Parliament. The Queen goes with him. They go in procession from their palace, accompanied by the King's guards, which is a very old custom in England. After the opening of Parliament, the members discuss the affairs of the nation. But Parliament cannot deal with local details all over the country, and so every town has its own small Parliament, which is called a council. the Houses of Parliament in London. Here the members of Parliament, elected by the people of Britain, pass new laws and change old ones. Once a year, His Majesty the King goes in royal state